So this is the classic alpha, beta and gamma demonstration. I've got a Geiger Muller tube. I've got a Geiger Muller tube set up just here and a scalar and timer just here. And I'm essentially just going to put different sources in front and I'm going to show you that they have different penetrating abilities. And I'm going to show you they have different penetrating powers. And I'm going to tell you that's linked to their ionizing abilities as well. It's important to recognize that radiation is not something to be scared about. You just need to know how to be safe with it. So I'm going to limit my time of exposure here. So I'm going to limit the irradiation that way. And I'm also going to make sure I'm a good distance away from the sources when I'm not using them. They are over a couple of meters away from me right now. So I feel quite safe that I've got enough distance from them to make the mean that the dose I'm getting isn't much higher than background radiation. It's very important to always be bearing that in mind that we're comparing the radiations to a background level. Right now there's no radioactive source here and uh, the background level is about you know 15, 20 counts per minute and that's just normal, we can't avoid that. So when you look at the numbers going up here, I always think, well, what's that compared to a kind of normal background radiation level? So here we go, this is our first source here. This is an americium source and it's just mounted in a bit of plastic like this. And it's quite nice here because I can actually show you, hopefully, I can show you with the camera that this is just a piece of metal. It's not going to focus that close. But inside there is just a piece of metal and that metal is americium. When I put it close enough to the Geiger Muller tube you can see that count is increasing at a very high rate, much higher than background level. Now this is mainly, americium is mainly an alpha emitter but not entirely an alpha emitter. So when I put some paper in front of it you should see that count level will drop quite considerably. But also as alpha it only has a very short range in air. And in fact, increase that distance to about four centimeters. And you can measure this accurately by using a scale. It's the type of thing you do at A level. Measure the actual range of the alpha particles in air, which is a very interesting experiment to do. So that's alpha. Alpha has a very short range in air and can be stopped by thin paper. And in this one, I have strontium. This is strontium-90, that's the isotope. And the strontium is a beta emitter. You can see when I open this up, you can see it's in a lead-lined pot. Now when I show that to the Geiger Muller tube, you can see that's an incredibly active source. And once more, hopefully I'll show you in there is just an ordinary piece of metal. This thing here is just there to hold it. And you can see those numbers are going up very rapidly. Now this one is actually a beta emitter. And so when I put the paper in, the numbers won't go down very, very much at all. Put one millimeter of aluminium in. And there is a decrease, but they're not all stopped. Two millimeters aluminium. And you can see that's blocking all of the beta particles, essentially. Beta can be stopped by just two millimeters of aluminium. So that's strontium-90. And the last one to do is radium, which actually emits all three, alpha, beta, and gamma. And you can see that's going around at about a thousand every second. So that's a very active source. This is radium 226. Actually paper will cut this down a little bit and so will a few centimeters in air because there are alpha particles being given out. Two millimeter aluminum will also cut it down considerably. You can see it's going from a thousand a second-ish to a bit less than that, about a hundred a second. So I know that I've got some gammas because the only thing that will go through that aluminum out of alpha, beta, and gamma is going to be the gammas. And so what do I need to block gamma? Well, you need thick lead. So here is about a millimeter of lead. Not entirely blocked, about half a centimeter of lead. And then about a couple of centimeters of lead. 
and you can see it's mostly stopped by that. It takes very thick lead to stop gamma radiation. So that's the classic alpha, beta and gamma demonstration. As you can see, we're always comparing back to that background level, which is not very high, but always is. And so therefore, any risks involved with radiation should always be comparing to the risk of just being alive here on Earth. There's always some radiations hitting us. If you think about the different alpha, beta and gamma, you need to think about their ionization and their penetration ability together. So essentially, because one thing is more ionizing, that makes it less penetrating. So the alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. It's very ionizing because it's got a plus two charge. That also makes it not very penetrating because what it does as it goes through the air is it will ionize all the air and therefore it will give its kinetic energy to the air and it will run out of uh, energy and it will stop. The beta is less ionizing, it's a single electron. And so it won't do as much ionization, so it will penetrate further. And then lastly, the gamma is not very ionizing at all, so it will penetrate very, very far. It is still ionizing, but it ionizes in a different way to the other two. Very concentrated rays of gamma can still do enough ionization to kill cells or maybe even give you cancer. Alpha, in one respect, is not very dangerous because if it is outside the body and if you're more than two centimeters of air or you're wearing clothes or you've got the skin on your body, it isn't going to get into the body. But if it does get inside the body, then it is going to be very dangerous. So it's very, very dangerous at close range or inside the body because it is so ionizing. Beta, on the other hand, will go into the body, but when it gets there, it's not as ionizing as alpha. And if you want to shield yourself from beta, then you just need some form of two millimeters or more aluminum shielding. And lastly, gamma, well, we're not as worried about gamma because it's so penetrating and so not ionizing that it'll probably just go straight through us. So that's not such an issue, but very concentrated beams of gamma can still do damage. So you have to use the ionizing ability and the penetration power together to weigh up how dangerous something is. Now remember, there's also this difference between contamination and radiation. It's a very important point. I haven't contaminated myself. I didn't touch any materials. There's very little likelihood of the americium, the radium, or the strontium-90 actually having got onto my body and contaminated me. So I am no longer being irradiated because I'm now far enough away from the actual materials. You can see we're back down to background levels. If I had become contaminated, then I could be worried because then I would take that radiation, I take that radioactive material with me and I would be irradiating everything else, I'd be irradiating myself and that would be pretty bad. <laughs> Remember with safety with these things it's all about distance and it's all about time. I'm more than two meters away from the sources and I'm going to spend as little time as possible within that zone, like close enough to them to be irradiated. Increase the distance or reduce the time and you'll limit the dose of radiation that you get. <laughs>